YouTube channel and today we're going to be talking about your attitude indicator as well as your directional gyro. These are just a couple that we have in the shop. You know they need to go in for overhaul but nobody's going to be really putting one in an airplane in today's modern environment. So we're going to go ahead and take them apart and show you what's all inside and a little bit about how they work. Not real complicated but we hope you find all this useful and informative so stay tuned for some fun why we take these apart. Okay, here we go. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. And here's just a real quick look at a really good picture of the front of the attitude indicator. This one's in the full colors, whereas mine was gray. And here's your directional gyro seated in your panel, and there you go. So what we've done now with the um, artificial horizon is we've taken out the three screws on the back of the case, back here, and we've taken out the eight around the front. And this is going to allow us to remove the cover on this, so stand by for that. Okay, now that we've pried loose the front cover with our little adjustment on it, we can adjust our little airplane our horizon. So we have that off now. And with ones out the back, it should be a simple matter to slide this all apart. And there you go. There's the casing. But as you can see, as you... Let's get this in the right orientation. Here we go. As we move it up and down, and it gimbals. So that's what that looks like on the inside. Now here's a different look at the inside of your attitude indicator and as you can see the little gyro in there that's spun up by the air and again the air comes in through the filter and these instruments don't really suffer from any damage but they do work really well and once they're spun up you may not have enough at idle speed but once they're, you're up at cruise altitude and you've got them adjusted they're going to work just fine. They're going to tell you your attitude and they're going to tell you how your bank angle on both of them. And you can see how the mechanisms work. They are quite nice. They do have overscale so they can't go too far up or down. So you can't climb too high and still follow it and you can't descend too um, um, too steep and have it still follow but as you can see it works really fine for most of the normal attitudes that we see during takeoff and cruise and landing so we hope you like all this stay tuned well not all the screws want to come out of this one so I can't get the front cover off so we're just gonna have to stick to the simulations and another uh, section of video where we take it apart so stay tuned for that Unlike the attitude indicator, the heading indicator is orientated so that only the horizontal axis is used to drive the display. When the aircraft turns, the gyro and attached main drive gear remain in their original orientation. This then causes the main drive gear to rotate the compass card gear, which then rotates the compass card on the face of the instrument. Note that, due to friction and precession, the heading indicator may slowly drift away from the correct heading. Because of this, the pilot should double check the accuracy of the instrument against the magnetic compass and realign as necessary. This should be done roughly every 15 minutes or so. Keep in mind, if the vacuum pump is not producing sufficient suction, when the engine is idling, the drift may be greater. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was probably more than you ever wanted to know about your attitude indicator and your directional gyro, but there's a complete understanding of how they work and what they look like on the inside. So, thanks for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman. Well, here's Freckles, our 19-year-old cat supervisor. Hopscotch and Sweet Pea shredding a box of soap. 
Tarzan hunting on the back porch trying to catch a bird on the other side of the screen. Here he goes making his leap to get up there. Quite the angelic one. They are quite the activity. And little one here, we're out and start call her Squeaker because that's what she does. She squeaks instead of meows. And of course, they're the in and out kitties because either they want in or they want out. 